Hi guys, welcome to this week's video. So today I thought I would um, do a little bit of an experiment and I'm quite excited to try this out. I basically have two lenses with me today to do macro photography and I wanted to compare them both and see which one, not so much that I prefer, but just one which works in different conditions and different subjects. So I have a, an L series 100mm macro lens which I'll be shooting at a 1 to 1 ratio. So as you know, the 1 to 1 ratio shoots in life size, theoretically, so I'll be cracking that out today. And also today I'm going to be shooting with the 24 to 70 LCD's lens which also has a macro function on it and it has a sort of macro slider which I'll show you that later on as well. As you can see it's pouring me rain which is absolutely fine because I love shooting in the rain as you know. But I have it on really good authority as you know that shooting in the rain is actually quite good for macro photography so I'm out here just to give it a wee shot and, uh, and see how they turn out but so far I'm surrounded by bracken as you can see which is absolutely beautiful. Haven't seen any flowers, the bluebells here are gone now which is a shame so really I'm just looking for bugs and anything I can find. I mean, it is torrential rain just now, so it should be good fun. So let's get going. So as I've been walking around, I managed to find this absolutely beautiful, massive, massive oak tree behind me. I'm obviously just off the path just now, um, and it's not ideal to try and find a composition here. So what I've had to do is I've tried to use the bracken as foreground. Let's just hope that it works. I've had to bracket my exposure here, mostly for the foreground and then again for the actual tree itself. So the finished picture, I'll post that on my Instagram when I get back to the house, but I'll show you that just now as well. So for the first test, I thought I would bring out the 24 to 70 just to see how it copes with macro. Now on the side of this, you've got a little button here, which um, you can slide up to switch it onto macro mode. And then also you just slide this here over until you get the macro focus part of it. Now this lens doesn't do a one to one ratio, so it'll be interesting to see how close I can get to the subject. Uh, and I've found a beautiful fox glove here. So I'm going to shoot the, the water droplets on it just to see how it copes. And then I'm going to do an identical shot with the 100 mil and see how they turn out. So the settings for this is going to be exactly the same. I'm shooting at ISO 1000 because it's incredibly dark and dingy here. Uh, F4 and 100th of a second. So we're going to basically just shoot this just now and then I'm going to do an identical picture and I'll put them side by side so you can see the two photographs. So it's middle one I'm going to shoot. Right. Turn that off. So now we've got the 100mm lens on, that's a 2.8 but I'm going to shoot at f4 just to keep it fair. Obviously I can probably, I'm guessing I can probably get a lot closer to the subject with this lens than I can with the 24-70. So let's shoot the second bud here and see the difference. My god this is like night and day. So I'm a million percent closer to the subject than I was with the 24-70. Obviously this is on the 1 to 1 ratio so it's going to be literally life size. It's fantastic and you can see the water droplets even closer. So let's just try and get, I can't even get like, I'd have to be away back here. So just for reference, I'd have to be focusing here to get the same shot. So let's just try, there we go. So one, two, there we go. So that is me taking the same photograph from here with the 100 mil. Now I know I can get closer to this, so I'm going to take a closer picture and just show you the difference. This is phenomenal. I'm using this handheld, I should really have this on a tripod. So obviously with this being a lot closer to the subject is it's, it's magnifying everything that I want to magnify on that fox glove. The only problem is that my hands are too shaky now to actually to get the photograph in focus. So I'm going to have to put it on a tripod just to make sure that it's nice and sharp. 
So as expected, this lens can get far closer to the subject and you can get much more detail on the subject using 100mm. I'm not even surprised, to be honest, I kind of knew that's how it was going to go, but I'm quite shocked at how much closer you can actually get. And obviously this lens is a, is a fixed 100mm prime lens, but it does go down to 2.8, which does give it that edge as well for the sort of beautiful sort of buttery background that you can get. So I have taken an identical shot. I was away back here to try and get it to match the 24 to 70 lens but just for an extra shot I've taken this one just to show you what the capabilities of this lens are and I'll post that here for you just now So the last time I was here, this place was a blanket of bluebells. It was absolutely gorgeous and obviously we're now in the sort of first week of summer so we've completely missed the opportunity to shoot bluebells. There are still a few dotted about so I'm trying to find an isolated bluebell somewhere with a really cool background. Haven't found one yet but I'm still on the hunt for one just now. This behind me is awesome. This, this sort of fallen tree behind me makes really really cool background. You don't get a background like that in woodland very often, it's quite rare. So I got really really low and I put the 24 to 70 lens on and I basically just shot across the bracken with that in the background and I've taken two photographs, I focused on the bracken and I focused on the background and I'll show you that picture just now. So I've managed to come all the way through the first part of the, the woodland here and it's absolutely gorgeous. And I've only met one other person on my travels so I've had the whole place myself which has been great. So the next part of the, the sort of walkway takes you to, takes you by a bit with massive massive pine trees. I think I've mentioned this in one of my previous videos but uh, the next bit... <laughs> okay we're recording. <laughs> uh, we filled in a hole. Right come on. So the next one I'm going to take you to is uh, where actually they filmed Outlander. We're right next to Ward Park Studios. So obviously they would use somewhere like this. It's absolutely stunning. It's very secluded. It's very, very cool. So I'm going to take you down to that bit just now and have a look at the pine trees. What I'm hoping for is some um, atmospheric shots using 24 70 lens. I'm also still on the hunt for a lone bluebell, which I haven't found yet. The images I took at the start of the video were a really, really good comparison between the, the 24 and the 100 mil. Um, and the differences, the sort of difference sort of photographs you can achieve using both lenses and then I think from that you can then make a decision as to what sort of lens you would prefer to buy depending on what sort of photography you're doing. I shoot mostly landscapes so you'll probably notice that there's a few landscape pictures that sort of peppered through this video and for me the 24 70 is spot on perfect for what I need. It does give you some really nice macro shots but maybe not as detailed as the 100 mil would so the jury's still out. I don't think I could pick a favourite, I think they're both fantastic for what I would need them for but again it depends on what sort of photography you're shooting. came across this absolutely phenomenal little runoff of water. I wouldn't really call it a waterfall but it's obviously raining pretty heavily just now so it's turned into a sort of mini waterfall. So I managed to climb down there um, against probably best advice because it's really really slidey and it's really mucky and I nearly went my backside quite a few times to get down. But I managed to get two different photographs down there. I got a close up of that rock that's getting battered by the water right in the middle and also came further back and got a really wide shot and um, trying to incorporate some of this slate on the uh, try and incorporate some of that slate on the bottom as a bit of foreground leading up to that and then also had some of the sort of greenery above it as a sort of framing as well and that was just a quickie shot and um, I was shooting at two seconds uh, ISO 100 f22 because I don't have any filters I don't have a polarizer with me which in hindsight would have been better because it would have cut some of that glare off the water because the sky is very white just now and it's bouncing down on top of that water so in hindsight I should have had my polarizer on but um, I didn't really have time I just kind of jumped out and took a quickie picture but I think the end photograph is pretty nice in the pine forest and um, it's absolutely fantastic. It's starting to get a little bit busier now, obviously it's late afternoon now so um, but the rain is still bucketing down and um, I'm thoroughly enjoying it so I brought this with me today. I figured macro photography with a little bit of light behind it could be quite interesting so I'm going to keep on a very very low warm light 
I've yet to find a subject that I want to try this out with. I was looking for bluebells, haven't found any, but most of the ones I found were dead, which is a shame, but it can't be helped. So I'm going to go and continue walking around this bit and just sort of scouting all the little nooks and crannies and see what I can find to try and light it up. almost given up trying to find a subject to light up and I decided to walk out of the pine forest in there was absolutely beautiful really nice to look at but I was looking for a bit of colour um, and I didn't find anything in there what I did find in there was a tiny little slug a little brown slug and the detail on his back was just amazing I didn't film it but I did take a picture of it and I'll show you my I'll call him Ted I'll show you Ted now um, he was really really cute but he's the only animal I've found so far apart from all the birds you can hear tweeting I haven't actually found any birds to photograph to try and get nice sort of close-ups of them and that so that was um that was a no-go but I find myself favouring the 100 mil at the moment for macro photography anyway obviously the 24 to 70 is absolutely stunning for the landscapes and I'm really really happy with it and I think for the amount of macro photography that I'll probably be doing that is absolutely perfect for me but I think for specialist macro photographers the 100 mil 2.8 is definitely the way to go it is absolutely stunning so on my way out, I found this path and all the way along here, as you can see, I'm surrounded by what's left of the bluebells and these little pink flowers. Not sure what they're called, but they're absolutely gorgeous. I managed to get out the LED panel. I kept it on the lowest power on a warm setting and I sort of backlit some of them. I've sidelit some of them um, just to basically bring them to life. And oh my, it really does work. It's absolutely amazing. The colours are so much more vibrant. You can see every single detail and every single hair. Obviously we don't have the sun doing that job for us today, but what we did get is some beautiful vibrant colours, the detail and the texture, and it just looks absolutely stunning. I mean, I know that not everyone can sort about with an LED panel, but I mean, you also have a phone. If you have a phone or an iPhone or any phone, they all have a flash, but it'll still do something to backlight them or whatever sort of effect you're trying to do. Also, I didn't use that today, but the photographs that I did get, I'm really, really happy with. So I'm going to post them at the end as per usual for you to have a look at. But I hope you've enjoyed today's video and I know it's been a very relaxed comparison between the 24 to 70 and the 100mm macro lens, both Canon, both L-series. But as far as macro photography goes, I've done the sort of late golden hour shoot, I've done um, a sort of playing your garden shoot and now I've done being out in the rain shoot and I have to say I have thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed them. Especially if you go out and the conditions aren't great and the landscapes aren't great. I mean, I mean this, I was kind of hoping for some sort of misty backgrounds through here and it's not really happening. But as far as landscape photography goes, not ideal conditions. But for macro photography, it's a completely different world. It's absolutely phenomenal. So I hope you'll have a shot at it, at least if you've never tried it before. But so far, so good. Absolutely love it. Really enjoyed it, especially being out in the rain. Absolutely love it. I hope you've enjoyed this video. And if you like this video, then like and subscribe. And until next time, I'll see you soon. Bye.